Christy Lewis, and I teach seventh grade science at West Valley Middle School. The handout that accompanies this video can be found at KCS website under the Student Resources tab. Uh, this week is April 20th Activity Week, Packet 3. Today's activity is seventh grade science. If you need a printed copy of this activity, they are going to be given out at the mill distribution sites each week between 10 a.m. and 12 o'clock noon. Today's lesson is the Law of Conservation of Mass. If you were able to watch last week's video, then you saw Mr. Steinke talk about uh, chemical equations and how to break down those equations. So this week we're going to talk about the Law of Conservation of Mass and how that law can be applied to chemical reactions. If on Friday afternoon you took a, a, a glass and filled it with water and set it in the windowsill, would you expect to see the same amount of water in there when you checked it on Sunday afternoon? Probably not. So the question is, did the water molecules disappear? Where did they go? Okay. Well, usually when we would go and check on a, on a Sunday afternoon, there would be less water in the glass. And so what happened to that water? Well, the water underwent a physical change, and those water molecules changed their state of matter. They went from a liquid state to a gas state through evaporation of, into the air. And so they did not disappear, right? they just changed their physical form. So if that was a physical change, then what's a chemical change? A chemical change is when matter reacts and the atoms rearrange to form a new substance. And that new substance, right, is created. And so the law of conservation of mass applies in those situations. What does the word conservation mean? Well, if I'm trying to conserve some, something, right, uh, the term conservation, might mean to save or to use sparingly. We're talking about chemical equations and we're applying the law of conservation of mass. Conservation of mass states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. It just means the atoms get rearranged over and over and over again. And so the amount of matter that we have on now is the same amount of matter that we've always had. The range of the atoms just continues to change through chemical reactions. For example, if you add 5 grams of sugar to 10 grams of water, the sugar would dissolve in the water and together would create a new product with a total of 50 grams. So 5 grams plus of, of sugar plus your 10 grams of water would equal a total. 15 grams. This is a physical change. So notice that both sides of the equation are equal to one another. So in a chemical reaction, the reactions must equal mass products. Remember our reactants are the chemicals that we begin the reaction with. And our products are the chemicals that are produced after that reaction takes place. So it's kind of like our five grams of sugar plus our 10 grams of water equals 50 grams, the same amount on both sides. So our reactants, are, the mass of our reactants are equal to the mass of our products. So if we're thinking of this as a balance, right, everything must be equal. So when matter goes through a physical or chemical change, the mass of the substances that you begin with must be equal to the mass of the substances that you end with. So the reactants and the products must act. They must be the same because it's the law of conservation of mass. So our reactants and our start with 100 grams in a um, total mass of our reactants, we would have to end 100 grams 
a mass of our products. If that measurement is off, then at some point there had to be some of that mass that escaped in some way. So the amount of mass you start with must be the amount of the products, the same mass. I have devised experiments to do at home this week to measure and see, and see about how the law of conservation mass might apply. In a popcorn experiment, you're going to need two bags of microwave popcorn, some tape, and a coat hanger, or a scale if you have one. You're going to take your unpopped bags of popcorn to each side or opposite ends of your coat hanger. Hold them up see if they can measure, if you can measure them, balance. The question that you're asking, are they equal? And before popping our popcorn, right, attach to each one with tape to our um, coat. And as you can see in the picture, they are equal. And our balanced part here of our coat hanger is pretty low. So I removed one of the bags and we went to the microwave and popped our popcorn. And then when we taped our bag to the popcorn again, sorry, when we taped our bag to the um, coat again, you can see that our bag of unpopped popcorn, it's slightly lower on this side than our popped bag of popcorn. And if you have this kitchen, which I happen to have, and you can actually measure the difference. So when I measured, you can see that our unpopped bag of the popcorn weighed 86 grams, and that our popped bag of the popcorn weighed 76 bags. What could be the possible reason for the differences in the masses of our unpopped popcorn and our popped popcorn? In this case, some, um, amount of our mass had to escape. And when you pop popcorn, you'll notice that steam escapes from our bag. When you open up that freshly popped bag, you can see that steam rise out of the top. And so steam or water vapor gets released into the air. And in this case, that's 10 grams of difference between our unpopped bag of popcorn and our popped bag. For our next experiment, we did a vinegar, used vinegar and baking soda. So I took an empty water bottle, just a plastic water bottle, um, our vinegar, our baking soda, a balloon, and we used our kitchen scale. We put some vinegar into the plastic bottle um, and weighed that, that and took note of that weight. And then we put some of our baking soda inside the balloon and recorded weight as well. And on our kitchen scale, you can see that we had 148 grams of vinegar um, along with our bottle. And then our balloon plus our baking soda weighed 12 grams. This made a total weight for our reactants of 160 grams. Now, one thing that I want you to keep in mind here is when we're using a kitchen scale, it's going to round to the nearest whole gram. And so that sometimes affects um, our measurements when we're talking about the law of conservation of mass. So the next thing that we did, did was put um, the opening of our balloon over the opening or mouth of our bottle. And when I lifted it up, you can see, wow, a reaction took place. There was a ga gas that was released and it inflated our balloon. And so that was a lot of fun to be able to see that reaction take place. At this point, I took the entire contraption, right? Our balloon, our inflated balloon, our bottle, the two of them attached together, and I put them on our scale. And the question is, were the weights similar? Well, well, right before the experiment, 160 grams for reactants. And our weight after the equaled 157 grams. What could cause differences in the total of our reactants and our products? 
Well, again, there's a few things that we can take into consideration. Our scales, how can scale affect the weights? Remember, remember I told you that our scale is going to round to the nearest gram. So this could account for some of the difference um, between our weights. If our scales are individual parts, reactants round it up. The other thing that could um, come into play, there could be some of our mass that is it possible that some of the gas created during their reaction escaped outside the seal between the balloon and our bottle? It's certainly possible. And because of that, we may have lost some of that gas. And that would impact our measurements for our law of conservation of mass in this case. The last experiment that I did, I did uh, was one on photosynthesis. I took two glasses and put a leaf to each one and filled them with water so that the leaves were submerged. I put one of the um, glasses outside in the sunlight and the other one I placed the other one I placed in, in this case inside a kitchen cabinet where there, there was not a light. After a few minutes, I went out and checked um, the leaves and took a picture of each one. What, what do you think the difference is leaves? On this leaf, you see some bubbles on the outside of the leaf. And the one that was in the cabinet, I don't see any bubbles. I waited an hour, so in 30 minutes. So after one hour of total time, I went out and looked again. You can see that there are several bubbles on the leaf that was outside in the sunlight. You can see that our, our cabinet leaf set, there are no bubbles or very few on our leaves in the cabinet. In the sun make bubbles, and our leaf that was in the cabinet not make any bubbles. And how or why is the conservation of mass important um, to chemical reactions like photosynthesis? How would it apply in this case? Well, this photosynthesis and cellular respiration chemical reactions are what's going to be discussed in our video for next week. And just ask it going to be the presenter for that, for that video. So again, this is 7th grade science, uh, week 3, April 20th, uh, the week of April 20th. I hope that you have an opportunity to maybe try some of these experiments at home and see how the law of conservation of mass can apply to these chemical reactions. Stay tuned next week for Mrs. Askin's video on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Thank you, and I hope you have a great week.